Okay, can you all see my screen, please? Can you all see my screen? If you can see my screen, just uh, let me know. Yes, I can see your screen. Okay, so we're going to use the taco stance exercise file. I can, I can see you. Taco stance exercise file. Okay. So that's what we will be using. Okay. So I'm going to read the overview. What is you know expected of us? A taco stand business is creating a sales report. They need help with chat, formless configuration, and you've been hired to assist. So let's look at the first task. I'll read the task, then you try to figure out how to do it at your end in less than one minute 30 seconds so once that it, once that time is up then I'll, I'll come back to you then you tell us how you manage to do this particular task so make a copy of the qtr2 worksheet to the right of the qtr2 worksheet so i'm going to take the question again we are to make a copy of the QTR2 worksheet to the right of the QTR2 worksheet. So how do we do it? What's the procedure? What's the process? So you have one minute, 30 seconds to complete this. Okay, so how do we make a copy of the worksheet? How do we make a copy of a worksheet? What is the process? The process for creating copies of a worksheet. Have we figured it out? Okay, let me go to um, Gordon. Theophilus. Yeah. So how do we create yes, a copy? Sir. Yeah, to you. I'm listening. Oh, sorry, I was experiencing some. I, I, I was experiencing some. I was experiencing some network issues. Could we please? Uh, oh, okay. The okay, I'm saying we are to make a copy of the QTR2 worksheet to the right of the QTR2 worksheet. Okay. That is the task. So if you have the taco stand exercise file open, yes, a copy of the QTR2 sheet. So how do we do that? How do we do okay, that? Um, mm -hmm. To create a copy to the right of it. Yes. Um, a, a second, please. Okay, no problem. Um, Kennedy, have you been able to find out? Um, Bright? Um, no, I'm sorry, not downloading sorry. it, but to make a copy to the right. Okay. So what do we do? So to make a copy to the right, you would right click on the, on the um, TTR1. Oh, we are making a click on it. We are we are making a copy of the QTR two, not the QTR one. Okay, so QTR one, you right mm -hmm. click on the QTR one. Oh, we are making right a copy on it. You see. Okay, we are making a copy of the QTR two, not the QTR one. Oh, okay, okay. 
Uh -huh. So how do we do it? So, so to make a copy of that, you right click on the QT uh, uh, QTR2. Okay. And then when you make a, you, a, a pop up will come, you will go yes. to move or copy. Okay. So move or copy, and then you select, you select it, and then you you check create a copy. Oh, okay. So we are to, move to, the, okay. move to the right. So once it's to the right yes, of please. it, we, we need to select move to end so that it will appear to the yes, right. Please. Of the yes, okay. Yes, please. Okay, so we've created our copy. So the copy comes with uh, the name QTR2, but in brackets, the number two, signifying a copy. Okay, yeah, Gordon, you have your hand up. Yes, Gordon, you have your hand up. Okay, let's continue. So let's look at task. Yes, got it. For finally, kindly mute sorry, yourself. Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, no problem. Okay, so let's look at task two. Display the formulas that are in the cells of the QTR2 worksheet. Display the formulas that are in the cells of the QTR2 worksheet. Display the formulas that are in the cells of the QTR2 worksheet. So how do we do QTR2 worksheets now? How do we display the formulas used on this particular worksheet? What is the process? Which of the tabs are we required to click? to get this particular, you know, function or button for displaying formulas. So please do and when you find it, you just let me know. So one minute, 30 seconds. Once it's up, I'm demanding for the process. Yes, it was founded. Okay, Fafali. Where do we go? Okay. So you right I right I selected any cell in the in the in the list. Okay. And then I came to formulas. Formulas. And then I okay. came to formulas. Okay. Yes, please. And formula, if you go to formula auditing, there is a place called show formula. That is it. So call this the formula okay. tab. Then within the formula group, yeah. we've got show formula. Aha. Uh -huh. So you need to know the terminologies and that's really going to help you out. Okay. Thank you very much. Hopefully. You are new on the platform, but Charlie, I like, I like the way you are contributing. Really appreciate it. Okay. So let's move to the task. On the QTR1 worksheet, apply a number format to display the numbers in column B through to E to two decimal places with the US dollar symbol, which is left aligned and the decimal point aligned. So I'm going to take the question again. On the QTR1 worksheet, apply a number format to display the numbers in column B through to E to two decimal places with a US dollar symbol, which is left aligned and the decimal point to align. 
Okay, Pofali, you have your hand up. Okay. Sorry, when I, the, I didn't put it off. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. Okay, Bubune. Yeah, so you go to the, um, you highlight um, columns B to D. Go to the to, home tab. Okay, we need to first of all go to the kids tab. Yeah. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. So column B to that is done. Okay. okay. So I go then to you the go home to the tab. home tab. Mm -hmm. Then um, so do, you see the num number number. Okay. Um, you can either go to the draw down. Yeah. The, okay. There's a drop down symbol over there. Okay. At the extreme right. Okay, yeah, so you can choose dollar. Okay, that is it. Okay. The dollar symbol. Then the decimal is at the far right. Okay. Far right, yeah. Okay. Um, so but you what, can, you what's, can just increase or reduce it. Increase or decimal. reduce it. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Because it's about numbers and currency, you go into the number group of the home tab. Thank you very much, Bubune. Okay. So let's look at task four. In the QTR1 worksheet, change the configuration of the Q1 taco revenue chart so that it displays the month on the X axis and the revenue on the Y axis. So we are just switching it up. On In the QTR1 worksheet, change the configuration of the Q1 taco revenue, which is this particular chart, so that it displays the month on the X axis and the revenue on the Y axis. So we have our revenue here, but we don't have the month. We rather have college campus, downtown, high school campus, industrial park, zoo. We want to have the month here. So how do we do this? What is the procedure? So you've got one minute, 30 seconds. Okay, anyone with a solution? Okay, Fafali. You can unmute and speak. Okay, so to do that, you would okay. go, you would select the graph. Okay. So when you select the graph, you come to design. The design okay. tab would appear. Okay. You come to design. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you come to switch row or column. That is so within the textual tab of the design tab to the data group, we have switch row or column. Okay. Thank you very much, Ofali. So once you click on it, let's switch it up for you. Okay. Uh, let me click. Mm. Yes. So now we have our uh, July, August, September total. Whenever you want to switch to a column, you use the process. Thank you very much. Yes, Teofilos, you have you have your microphone on. Do you want to speak? 
Give us. No, no, sir. You have your mic, mic on. Someone. Yes, I'm listening. Yeah, someone just answered. Okay. Someone just answered. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, let's look at task five. Without using the new sheet button, move the pie chart on the QTR2 worksheet to its own chart sheet named QTR2. Without using the new sheet button, move the pie chart on the QTR2 worksheet to its own chart sheet named QTR2 chart. So how do we do this? So there is this particular on the QTR2. So we should form list. So I think it's this. So how do we move this to a new worksheet named QTR2 chart? But we don't need to use add a new sheet button. OK. Without using the new sheet button. Okay, Joseph Ampovo. Uh -huh, you have your hand up. Or oh, you just joined. Okay. Without using the new sheet button. Without using the new sheet button, move the pie chart on the QTR2 worksheet to it. Yes, who is ready? Okay, Fafali. Yes, we are listening. Yeah, Fafali, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, yeah. sorry. Uh -huh. Okay, to move the chat, you right click on the chat. Okay. And then you would see move chat. Move chat. So when you see move chat, uh -huh. then you select new sheet. Okay. And then you name it QT how to uh, chat. And then you press chat. OK. Okay, QTR to chat then you hit on okay it will move the chat to a new sheet in to chat so another way of getting this is to also go to the contextual tab the design tab and we have the locations group so once you're within the location group you can just click on move that and it will still move it is that okay please so in the official Microsoft yes, exam, yes. if you are not finding, yes, if you are having difficulty finding where to locate a particular tool, you can just resort to a right click. When you do the right click and you don't get what you are looking for, then you quickly go through the tabs and the groups. That way it will save you a lot of time. Then you can get the job done as quickly as possible and get certified. Okay, so let me grade it and we look at as project for practice exam, exam two. And that will mean that we've gone through 70 um, different tasks, which is related to the actual certificate. But you just have to go through one more time. Then when you're ready, you can take the exam wherever you are. I just need to connect to you then. Take it. Okay. So let's wait whilst it creates. Let's look at the next computer hotline. So please open the exercise file computer hotline. Close this one, save it so that you can use it again. 
computer hotline exercise 12 and we've got five tasks to complete and we'll be done with this particular session you are assistant manager of the computer hotline the business offers overtime bonuses to employees who work extra hours you've been taxed with preparing the tables so that is our task for this particular project so let's look at task one on the average call time worksheet, use an Excel feature to copy the spark line into all the vacant cells of the trend column. On the average call time worksheet, use the Excel or use an Excel feature to copy the spark line into all the vacant cells of the trend column. So how do we do this? On the average call time worksheet, use an Excel feature to copy the spark line into all the vacant cells of the trend column. So you've got one minute, 30 seconds to complete this. Which Excel feature can be used to copy spark line? Yes, Kennedy. So, uh, so you, you just use the fill handle. Fill handle, okay. So I'll move my mouse to the bottom yes. right corner. Then I just need to do a double tap. Or click and you do what? You drag. So once you click and drag, it copies, you know, the stack line into all the vacant cells of the trend color. Are we all okay with this, please? Can we all do that? So if you don't want to use the fill handle, you can come to everything, just select the range. Then you come to the editing group. We've got fill. Then you select fill down. Whatever approach you choose, you're still going to arrive at the same result. So you need to take note of the tabs, the groups, or you can use the fill handle if you want to. So let's ask two. On the employee hours worksheet, add a row to the table that automatically calculates total hours worked by all employees. On the employee hours worksheet, add a row to the table that automatically calculates total hours worked by all employees. By all employees. So I'm on the employee hours worksheet. So how do we add a row? Because we are not to do it manually. We are just to insert an additional row which will automatically calculate the total hours worked by employees. So what is the procedure? What is the process? You've got one minute, 30 seconds to figure this out. Okay. Kennedy. Uh, yes, Kennedy. Uh -huh. so you go to the uh, contextual tab. That is the design. Okay. So after selecting any of the cells, okay. Yeah. You go to after design. selecting any of the, then you click the total. Total row within the table yes. style options. Okay, that is it. So once you do that, automatically it gives you a row which is total, which automatically calculate the total for all employees. So if I check the total row, you see it's gone. So once you've converted a particular range into a table, there is no need for you to create another row named total and insert a formula. That's a waste of time. So once you, you have it in a table, you just click on total row. It will just insert it for you. Then as you create additional rows, so if I hit on the tab, the total will be there. So the total will just keep shifting down, 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 down. Then as you compute, it will just be what adding them for you. Okay, so that's that. Thank you very much, Kennedy. Go to task three. But please, if you have any question, just um, just let me know. Then we can sort it out. So we are to add a function to the overtime column, which is cell H4, on the employee hours worksheet that will display the word yes 
if the value in cell J4 is higher than 40, otherwise display the word no. So we have to add a function to the overtime column, cell H4 on the employee hours worksheet. That will display the word yes, if the value in cell J4 is higher than 40, otherwise display the word no. So which function do you think will be appropriate for this particular task? So you use the if, if is possible. If function is possible, okay. Yes. So walk us through the process. I believe the rest are following. If you are moving too fast, you need to let us know. Are we all okay with this? So add a function to the overtime column cell H4, which is where I'm currently at. That will display the word, yes, two plus. I'm following. Yeah. You're following, okay. Okay, so we need a function that will display the word yes if the value in cell J4 is higher than 40, otherwise display the word no. And Kennedy is saying we need to use the if function. So, okay, Bubune, you can speak. Yes, you can speak. Yes, we are listening, Bubune. <clears throat> you need to unmute yourself because if you don't unmute, we can't hear you. You yeah. have to, um, you can use the if function. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So tell us, how do we go about it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, equal, equal to okay. if uh -huh. into bracket. If. Okay. J4. J4. Okay. J4. Uh -huh. Um, greater than yeah the greater than sign okay 40. okay i've done that comma true okay uh -huh. um value okay um yes so the yes yes so you use you write yes i, I just write yes, yes. so okay. No, with um, with um, ap apostrophe inverted commas. Okay. Inverted commas. Yeah. Yeah. Inverted commas. Okay. Sorry. Then, then what? Uh, comma. No. Okay. No Still inverted commas. Okay. Yeah. Good. So this approach is good when you are already you know with the formulas. So it's perfect. And I want us to take a look at another option where we use the function argument. Those of us um, who are now learning to use the if function. So normally you go to the formula tab, you come to insert function, then you go to, you type if, you click on go, then uh, you double tap on the it opens so this gives you the function argument so our first field is a logical test and you can see from here that logical test is any value or expression that can be evaluated to be true or false so if you look at our question it is telling us that we need to display the word yes if the value in cell j4 is higher than 40 so our logical test will be what j4 greater than 40 and that is what bubune did are we okay with that so what value if true so if it is true we are to type what yes so we type exactly what is there and if i move on to the next field automatically we put the inverted commas so this prevents us from making mistakes Sometimes you might forget to bring the inverted commas. And the value if false is what? No. No. Then you click a field, then automatically the inverted commas will be added to that particular, you know, argument. So once you finish, and that's it. 
So we, we, we have two ways of doing this. So thank you very much, Gubune. And there is also another way where you use the function argument. But I normally advise that you use the function argument to, to help as a, as a guide, if, if, if I can put it in that particular context. Okay, okay with this, please. If you are okay, just show by hand using the raise hand feature, then I will know. Those who are not okay, you can still ask. Okay, Kennedy is fine too. Floss is fine. Joseph is fine. Okay, um, Bubune is also okay with it. Okay, um, Theophilus, are you okay? Fafali, are you okay? Good. Okay, okay. Bright is also okay. Okay, great. So let's look at four. In cell I4 of the employee hours, use a function to copy the name from cell A4 and format the name so the first letter is uppercase and the remaining letters are lowercase someone you still have your hand up do you want to contribute okay so in cell a i4 of the employee hours sheet use a function to copy the name from cell a4 and format the name so the first letter is uppercase and the remaining letters are lowercase. So if you look at A4, we have um, the name in, in what small letters. So correct that into normal case that if it starts with a capital, then the remaining letters remain um, in lowercase. So which function can you think of? to help us achieve this. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kennedy. You need to unmute yourself, Kennedy. If you're speaking, we can't hear you. You need to unmute yourself. Hello, sir. Yes. I think we have to use the upper and lower function. Upper as, and lower as function. To, as to how we are to use it, I don't know. Oh, okay. Mm. Because if you use the upper function, it will convert everything into uppercase. And if you mm. use the lower function, it's going to convert everything into lowercase. Mm. There is another function to put it. It's a text function. We're yeah. just converting text. Yeah, so think about it. And come again. Uh, let me check with the others. Fafali, Joseph, Samuel. Uh, so I think it's called um, sentence keys or... So just try it at your end. Let's see if it will work. If it this works, one, then you can don't use it. I really know. I'm okay. a little bit confused. Uh, when you do it, I'll be able to see. Okay, no problem. Let me go to Samuel. Then I'll, I'll come to Bright. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate. Let's say I have this. Fifth. So if I type, let's say, let me go to this, then I'll use upper. That is what Kennedy suggested. So we have upper. So upper convert a text string to all upper keys. So I'll double. Then which text am I converting? Which is this? Once I click on OK, it automatically convert this particular text all in lowercase into upper keys. Then we have another one, which is what? Lowercase. So with lowercase, you just type lower. Then you click on OK, lower cam. Then you select your text. It's in lowercase now. Then because we want it to start with a capital letter and the rest small letters, then that's what? A proper. So that is the, the name of the function where we use proper proper keys, proper, then I'll set, you see proper comes. So you convert a text string to a, to proper keys, the first letter in each word to upper keys and all the other letters to what lower keys. So if you've not used before at least with this exercise, you now know, and I'm not sure you did it. Okay, are we okay with this? Are we all okay with this? So you have lower, 
upper and what proper okay great so how do we solve this then so which function are we going to use mm -hmm. after all these explanations the, we... the proper the proper that is it so i'll just go to my i have my proper i'll double tap then i'll just come and select the first um which is cell e was that so once i do that because it's in the form of a table it will just pick the remains so emilio ivan tyler clyde so watch out for this particular you know task you might use some of these principles or some of these processes in the actual certification exam so watch out for that okay so tax five on the average call time worksheet okay kennedy you have your hand up do you want to speak okay that's fine so on the average call time worksheet create a 3d clustered column chart that shows only the call time for friday by each sales person position the chart to the right of the table and change the colors of the chart to colorful palette four so take the question on the average call time worksheet create a 3d clustered column chart that shows only the call time for friday by each sales person position the new chart to the right of the table and change the colors of the chart to colorful palette four so how do we do this so one minute 30 seconds to think about it then we can proceed On the average call time worksheet, create a 3D clustered column chart that shows only the call time for Friday by each person. Mm -hmm. How do you go about this? We are creating a clustered column chart, a 3D clustered column chart that will only show the call time for Friday by each sales person. So once that is done, we need to position the new chart to the right of the table and change the colors of the chart to colorful palette four. Okay, Kubune. So how do we go about this? You need to unmute. Oh. I want to try. I want to. Oh try. yeah, try. Uh, yeah, try. I'm not really sure about it. Okay, so yeah, so um, you go to insert. Then you go to the chat ribbon. Uh, okay, the chat uh, group. Mm -hmm. the the chat group. Yeah. Okay, good. Then you choose the ribbon, and uh, a column. Sorry, you go to the column where the bars are yeah then you see 3d okay 3d yeah okay i've done that yes okay all right so do uh, i select before i think or what 
Yeah, so we are supposed, I think we are supposed to select um, the Friday column first before doing it. We are supposed to select the 3D column first. But I'm not really sure. Okay. The, the Friday, um, okay. The Friday um, session. Session, okay. Before doing it. Was, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. So let's go to insets. Let's come yeah. here. 3D cluster. Okay. So, what do we do next? Okay. Okay. Then, um, so let's um, select data. Select data. So you go select to the data. data. Session. Okay. Okay. That is that. Um, okay. So um, for that of the 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 row the one two three four i think we'll four. edit we'll uh -huh. go to edit and select those persons uh, then i'll go to where sales person so you select the sales person's um column column okay yes okay okay Then I'll do what I click on OK. Yeah, OK, yeah. OK. Is this what we are looking for? Are you sure? Because I'm not really seeing everything. Um, uh, um, I think I think we are supposed to select all the, um, the before the salesperson. Okay. Yeah, because we we just selected a few. Yes. Okay. So we select the salesperson column. We hold it down, the control down, and we select that of Friday. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then we go to insert three D cluster column. Three D. And, and that is okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is also not working. So what should we do? No, I okay. So, um, well, someone can give it a try. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can I? Uh -huh. So what I did was that uh, mm -hmm. I first. Select the Friday. Okay. Hello. Then I yes. went to insert tab. Are you there? Yes, yes. Then I went to recommended chat, all chats. Okay, recommended chats, then all chats. Okay. Then I choose the 3D. 3D cluster color. Okay. I think it's yeah. the same process. Now the, now the you... name is not there. The name okay. is not there. So you have to create the name. So you I did that by okay. right clicking the chart. Okay. Let's do it. Then okay. select data. a few seconds let me select select okay so you right click let's what data right okay yes sir ah done that so now now you go move to the sales aspect of the where do table. i go i should go sales to where aspect of the table sales column the sales person. How do sales I move column there? What the should team. I do? You highlight or? But before I highlight, I'll do some edits, right? You cannot just. You have to. Or I, you have I, to I just click, go and edit. You have to click. You have to uh, click the edits. Uh, 
How do I say it? Which of them? Is this labels edit? The one, then the have one on the, the one on the right, this one. Is it right or left? The, where we have the one, two, three. This one. Four up to ten. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I've done that. Now uh -huh. you have to come and highlight the sales column. Okay. But I think I did that from when it top did down. that, right? And uh -huh. then okay. uh, we we click this. on OK. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Abubune, I think we did this. Just that like you did not select the entire data range, correct? Yes, it's, it's the same yes. process. Yeah, it's the same process. So that is it. Are we all okay with this? Yes, sir. So what about the changing of okay. the color? The color? Uh -huh. So we need to look at the color as yes. well. So we position the chart yes, to the right of the table. And let's change the, okay, color to what? Colorful palette four. Okay, so where do we go? Mm -hmm. Where do we go? Any help from any of us? Yes. No one. Um. Okay. I'm. I'm experiencing some tough network. I'm experiencing some tough network. Oh, sorry. Say, but, uh, let me try. Um. um okay. You no go problem. to the format tab. The format tab. You go to the format okay. tab. Yes. Okay. I'm there. Uh huh. In the format tab. Um. Please, what, did you select the table first? Uh, so no, it's not the, the table. Chart. Yeah. I mean, the chart. Yes, the chart. Yeah, the chart, the chart is selected. Yes. yes. Okay. And then um. Uh, okay, then select uh, any of the colors from the uh, shift something group. Shape styles. I don't think that is that is where we can find a colorful palette. So come again, Pavali. Okay, please. I think we should go to uh, design. Yes. Okay, design. Okay. Design, and then there is change colors there. That is it. Yes. Change colors, and then we come to the fourth one. That is, that is it. So we. That is it. So you have colorful section and monochromatic section. So you need to take your time and go through all of these tabs for the purposes of the exam. Then we select what colorful palette, colorful. That is it. Oh. And that solves the task. So we're going to grade it. So in the in the you see task one, task two, task four, task five. But instead of grade, you see submit project. But the interface. Um, is not the same, but it has some, you know, similarities. So we have big projects, but over there you see what submit a uh, project, but you see the overview of the task. It's not difficult. You just have to know where to go, understand the question, and you'll be fine. So we will look at. Hello. Uh, yeah um okay i thought you were almost done um yeah i wanted you to um briefly the trend how did you find it i was having network issues so i didn't get that portion okay uh, the trend how do you do that okay um that's that um spark line okay let me the, the system is still grading you hold on when it's done i'll open a new sheet and use some values to explain that so just give me a couple of um, some few minutes. Let me complete this. Then I'll take my time to explain. So normally, spark lines are not 
vector graphs. So instead of getting a line graph or a bar chart, you can just use a very small spark line to help you interpret the data that you are working with. So in Microsoft Excel. A few seconds, please. Okay, so I think we got nine seven one thousand, but we use three hours four minutes, four minutes twenty five seconds because you are the group. But on an individual, you know, level, you need to complete all of these thirty-five tasks in fifty minutes. So at least past thirty days, nine hundred and thirty students have taken this test. The average score obtained on this test is eight four four, and we are way way above it. So that's impressive. So we'll get back to Bubine on this one. Okay, so let me zoom in. Zoom to selection. Okay, so if I have, let's say, 20, 30, let's say five, then I come here, 65, 88, 83, 67, 87, 91. And I want to use spark line to select the, the cell I want the spark line to appear in. Then I go to insert. Then within the spark line groups, we have line, column, or win or loss, depending on the data you are dealing with. So if it is line and line, then it will ask which data range. Then you select the data range you want the spark line. Okay, then it gives you that line graph. Okay, so it was 20, it went up, then it fell want to use um, the autofill, you position your mouse at the bottom right corner, then you just drag and automatically it will give you a spark line that you came for. Lubuna, is it okay? Yes, yes. Thank you very uh, much. You also change it into color. You can change it to win or low. Whatever you want to do, you can have high points, low points, negative points, first points, last points, and we have styles here. So once you insert a spark line, it gives you the contextual type for the spark line, and you get to go through it bit by bit. So, uh, I, I recorded about 21 lessons. So bits.ly um, gh. When you go to more Excel tutorial videos, go through all. It will help you understand the groups, the tabs, and the dialog box launches. And you just pass the Excel certificate for time. Okay. So I think I believe we've done justice to this particular project. So I'm going to share my screen. Then so just give me uh, a second or let's say 30 seconds on what you've, you've learned from this section. One, one, one thing really got to you, which you intend to use for your work. Then we end the session. So I'll start with uh, Bright. So what did you learn from this session? Just one, one thing you've learned and how you intend to use it at a workplace. Hello, Bright. Okay, let me go to. Okay, let me go to Kennedy. About the alpha lua and proper function, you've okay. actually impressed me. Okay. 
Okay, so mm. you you you've understood it, right? And yes, sir. It it's part. Like it. It's part of the development areas. Oh, okay, okay, that's yeah. fine. Okay, great. Fafali. Uh, okay, I think I the use of the spark line. Okay, okay, so you'll be using it for yes, moving forward. Okay, that's yes, good. it's a reason for my work. Yes. Okay, good. Theophilus. Um, the insertion of the three D chart and then the um the coloring. Okay. Okay, using the color palette. Okay, uh, Mr. Ampoff, would just save? Yes, uh, I the think the same, the same as the 3D and the, the color palette, yes. Oh, okay, okay, good. And what about Samuel? Hello, Samuel. Okay, uh, Bubune? and bright okay so okay samuel uh -huh. yes samuel no. yes I, yes i think i have i have left something on the the chart the chart okay where where you have to copy yes where you have to copy the chart without necessarily uh you, you have to put the chart on a new for the new sheet we are necessarily copying it yes okay okay thank you very much okay all right, all right. thank you right okay so uh -huh. yeah so i've been i've been enlightened um, by i were well, lots of things that um were new to me like okay. the proper the spot line and uh, and some some other functions but i've been enlightened so okay i think there's more to learn here there's more room to learn yes 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 there's a lot so uh the files that i shared with you in your own free time be practicing on it the steps are are there so you just open the exercise file it is that if you don't know how to do it the steps are there just go through it it's about 275 or so if you're able to go through and master it, you'll be good to go. In terms of work, then in terms of the certification, to you wouldn't have a problem. Okay, so thank you very much for joining this evening session. I will upload yesterday and today's sessions um, tomorrow by 8 or 9 a.m. And I will inform you on the group. Then you can later go back. If you want to review it, you do it. So within the course of, um, let's say, Monday, we will we will look at the third practice exam okay kennedy you have your hand up you've, uh, you've answered my question oh okay okay and that's fine mm, so mm. okay so um guys enjoy the rest of your evening and i'll see you tomorrow at seven quarter okay thank you you're welcome bye bye